Can you? Okay. Is it right yeah. here? Dear colleagues, it is my deep pleasure to have here Professor Remo Rutini, one of the founders of Black Hole Physics, and I would like to stress the 50th anniversary of foundation of Black Hole Physics is coming very soon. So I would like to ask Remo for his excellent lecture, and I hear you talking. Thank you so much. Hearing. Yes. Yeah, so and uh, please. It is really a pleasure to be here the second time and being guest of this university with whom we signed a collaboration agreement with uh, ICRENET. And the uh, interesting point is that uh, last visit was also the last time we were in public. And then uh, the disaster of this uh, virus came in. And uh, they were two years practically. And this years were essential to have a rethinking about this uh, general field. Uh, for a while I was isolated even uh, from uh, our center in Pescara. The only good thing was to have the beach in front. And after six months of the first wave start walking for a few minutes on the beach. But now the situation has improved. And, um, and the celebration of the 50th anniversary arrived and we celebrate this at uh, MG 16 and these uh, are the the booklet of the award that we printed for a distinguished number of people in this moment in which uh, previous to the previous to the uh, pandemic science was going out of control in my opinion and um, we had time to think it over and uh, mainly to finish some of the work and in this very difficult this new start an interesting new start i selected uh, a certain number of people which i was sure they were, were able to contribute to the new founding of uh, general relativity after the pandemia. And the first person that we gave the, the award was Dimitris Christodoulou. You will have the booklet and the motivation but uh, to me, this uh, extraordinary person really signifies a lot. Dimitrius back in 1967, Achille Papapetro, I don't know how many of you knew him, maybe a few, good. <laughs> And I refer to you. Achille was uh, in Paris, escaping from uh, uh, Ger uh, German-Italian invasion <laughs> of uh, the Hellenic country. And uh, then he stayed in Paris, stay in Paris after some 
quite complex history. And uh, from his position in Paris, uh, uh, called John Wheeler to say there is a, a student in Greece who is really very interesting, but he makes a lot of noise. He fights with the professors. We don't know what to do. And, uh, <laughs> and we uh, paid a trip to Paris, examine uh, Demetrius, who was 16, and he bought a second ticket to Princeton. Uh, Dimitrius came at 16, uh, Wheeler uh, insisted to, not to insist, uh, proposed to insert him uh, in the department of physics. And at 17, Dimitrius finished all the undergraduate. And then uh, Wheeler gave me Dimitrius as my first student, because I was a very young professor in Princeton myself. I had worked with Wheeler on uh, the effective potential that you use very much to analyze the Kerbla cool. And in particular with Wheeler, before arriving Demetrius, we defined the co-rotating orbit around the black hole and the counter-rotating orbit of the black hole, which later on were introduced as ISCO by someone. <laughs> and uh, in, in that period with Wheeler, we also introduced, I was asked a moment ago, the concept of ergosphere coming from the negative state of the counter-rotating uh, orbit. Therefore, this is, uh, uh, we brought this result to Moscow and we had the great fortune to meet an exceptional man who was Yevgeny Lifchitz, who inserted immediately in the Landau Lifchitz, like everybody can find, this result as an exercise and very well uh, uh, written. Just back after that, at the same time in Princeton, there was uh, a very bright graduate student, Zerilli. And Zerilli working with Wheeler, with, with, uh, with, uh, with um, Tullio Regge, developed the tensorial harmonic for gravitational radiation from a particle falling into a black hole. These two results were previous to the arrival of Demetrius. And it's interesting that uh, two students of Wheeler, former students, Misner and Thorne, jumped on this uh, particle co-rotating, counter-rotating, the particle gravitating radiation that Zerilli and uh, introduced by me and Wheeler, and you know all the story which went on. Unfortunately, uh, there are counterindication of the validity which I mentioned of this, but let's about their uh, claimed discovery from, uh, of gravitation wave from observed from the Earth. Of course, not on gravitation wave. Gravitation wave we know from Pulsar uh, and the beautiful result which were presented at, uh, at the meeting by Kramer. Anyway, uh, let's go back to Demetrius. Uh, Demetrius came in and um, he analyzed, uh, uh, of course, everything we did with Wheeler was based on a two-page paper, two-page two paper by Roy Kerr, fantastic paper. Everybody should read that paper. <laughs> the Reuker paper, 1963. And Demetrius uh, wrote the first result in a two-page paper. And uh, we had a problem because I went to Wheeler and I said, look, I mean, 
Dimitrius, I, I did the equation. I asked him to integrate the equation, and he solved the equation within, <laughs> within a night. <laughs> I said, I mean, we, 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 uh, we have to recognize the exceptionality of the man. And I said, uh, Dimitri should publish. But uh, in this two pages paper, there is a diagram by Dimitrius and another diagram by Wheeler and myself. The editor said, no, no, it's impossible <laughs> in two pages that we publish an unpublished paper by two and uh, only one author. It's impossible. And then I, I asked the editor, I said, but if you have a declaration by me and Wheeler that we ask you to do. Will you do it? He said, yes, I will. Okay, this is how the paper was born. But at the same time you will be interested was the first time that the Penrose process was introduced. Was not introduced in Florence in Florence, there was an occupation of the meeting by uh, the leftists who were uh, uh, going around with red flag. And therefore, uh, Roger could not speak. And therefore, we sit, sat on the, on, the, on, the, on the floor to discuss about the possibility of having a process splitting two particles, which are not in the Riviste. Back to Princeton, I integrate immediately and we send in that paper. The, uh, we put in that paper of Demetrius. But the point was not to show, was just to show that it was not possible to realize. And later on, Roger, without mentioning the paper, but reached the same conclusion and he published that result. So much for history, and uh, let's go on further. Dimitrius, after that, stopped to be interested in astrophysics. This is the only, and then he start uh, 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 Penrose and Floyd. Here you see all this, and uh, uh, he start to be interested in new, uh, uh, of course, in fundamental. Uh, uh, differential equation where he entered many, uh, many treaties. Uh, but uh, the problem was to have the thesis of Demetrius presented on that single paper. And for that uh, event, we call on the best people we could imagine in Princeton. This, uh, this uh, is uh, Eugene Wigner attacking, as usual. <laughs> and uh, here was David Wilkinson, the, f the, uh, the man who did the WMAP satellite discovering the cosmological black body radiation uh, in, the, in great detail. And Johnny Wheeler and myself, who had the, to stay there just in case, Demetrius, we will not be able to answer, because this was the duty of a professor in Princeton. If the student fail or cannot answer, the professor has to do that. And, um, and Wigner was very, very special, very few words. Let me finish with an anecdote which I like very much. Wheeler was working with uh, in uh, Stockholm uh, and uh, and uh, Bohr and he went to look in the, with the secretary and he found a note interesting wrong if he was uh, interested wrong. Well, Wigner was uh, following the path, and he said, he used to say, 
very interesting. But he had another son, if true. <laughs> Therefore, was the first statement very interesting? Wrong. Second, if true, declaration of war. And then was the declaration of war. We were very afraid that this would happen with Demetrius. And uh, Wigner was watching me all the time. And later he told, he wrote, he said, someone was in trouble, but then we found a solution. Re yes, I was, in a moment, I was in trouble. But uh, then I uh, uh, was very happy, the final result. Dimitris got the PhD. And uh, one day, uh, <laughs> Lifchitz, Yevgeny, asked me, how is exceptional, Dimitrius? Well, I said, it is exceptional. Imagine he got to the PhD at 18. And Lifchitz looked at me, this is not exceptional at all. I got to the PhD at 18. <laughs> Well, these were the hero of those days. And, uh, and then after that, we, we start to go on with uh, the help of Riccardo Giacconi. We went on uh, to discover uh, binary uh, X-ray sources, identifying the first black hole with the Gracie Morrison Award, and, uh, and, uh, and then having this fantastic meeting in Les Ouches, uh, excuse me, in uh, Varenna. Here I am with uh, Aldo Treves, my closest collaborator in Italy, Riccardo Giacconi, and now you can see everyone. And uh, out uh, in this line, you have Chandra Sekar, you, well, you have Teddy Newman, who unfortunately did not participate, but, but uh, fortunately participate. Then you have uh, uh, the discoverer of Pulsar, Jewish. Then you have the discoverer of gravitational wave from binary Pulsar, Taylor. And they even this number of Nobel laureates keep increasing because here we have also Pen Ro uh, Roger Penrose, and, uh, and we hope very much that this picture can continue to be successful. And, but out of that, the new era started, a new era in which we, the key point for me for many years was to find a way uh, later on, of course, we found the general formula for the black hole with uh, Christodoulou and myself, 1971. And the key idea was, can we find a way to use, to use the mass energy formula, which we introduce as a source of energy for uh, astrophysics. And this was started uh, in 1971, the same time in which the formula was obtain obtained in the month uh, of uh, uh, September, October. Uh, and a uh, few, few weeks later, there was the same formula derived by Stephen Hawking, exactly the same formula. But then the key point was, can we use that formula, which tells that up to 50% of the energy could be extracted in principle to reversible transformation from a black hole? This is the question. Reversible transformation, 50% of energy, much more than nuclear energy from a black hole? This was the question. Well. The interesting thing is that we had to wait 50 years to answer. And only this week we have a way out and a positive solution. 
the rest of my talk will not be dedicated to the other people of the world, which were very distinguished as well, Tuft, uh, Tsui Piran and Steven Weinberg. This is another story which I will not uh, enter into matter, but uh, I gave the rare award because Stephen, at the third Grossman meeting, told me, Remo, either you, the Chinese did not want to allow the Israeli people into, into China because there were no diplomatic relations. There was the hardest, uh, the hardest uh, uh, bargain because Stephen said, Remo, either you have at least one Israeli in, uh, to, to come in, uh, in China or we will cancel the Grossman. Finally, we got two Israeli, one was Tzvi Piran and the other one Gerald Tauber. And uh, this was uh, a fantastic success story that I ask uh, to celebrate uh, in the 50th anniversary with uh, Steven Weinberg. Um, uh, we presented Stephen at seven o'clock in the morning, the award. We discussed the week before. I knew that he was not well, but people did not take seriously that he was not well. Unfortunately, the day after of the award, uh, I will write a few things about that. Uh, Stephen entered in coma and, and uh, died. But let's go back to the, to the next part of the story. Okay, the other, the other award went to the, this fantastic mission uh, which uh, uh, relate Germany and Russia. This, uh, 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 and, but here we are speaking already about uh, the after, the after uh, uh, um, uh, disaster. And here are the first result, beautiful result of this uh, uh, mission uh, by uh, Rashid Sunyayev and collaborator and Max Planck looking at the universe and uh, obtaining this new opening. Let's go back to the topic of uh, my presentation. But this also has been important. The award is just uh, this, uh, this are trajectory we studied around uh, a black hole and uh, I found this uh, uh, so beautiful and this is the award of Marcel Grossman Award, this uh, statute of the, of the particle around care, which uh, <laughs> reminds of some simulation I have seen in this meeting. But these are, uh, uh, this is not science, this is uh, just art, based of course on a very detailed numerical computation. Let's go back, this close this and uh, Let's go back to the, to the topic. How we start the new era after the last rag time? We publish a paper in monthly notice. What happened? Something is stuck. I, I made a mistake to use this one. Uh, the new idea came from the work we had developed with Ricardo Giacconi of binary X-ray sources. Binary X-ray sources have been completely understood, like the case of Centaurus, here, and uh, everybody knows about, here. And what happens is that you can have a very massive star of uh, up to 20 solar masses with a binary companion neutron star. And this object gravitationally collapses 
itself. And then during the gravitational collapse uh, of this big object of right, uh, approximately 10, 11 solar masses, and Orge will come back to this, accrete on the neutron star companion. And in some cases, the accretion is so big that uh, this companion neutron star, due to accretion, in gravitationally collapse and form a black hole. Therefore, the formation of black hole on this theorem, on this model, is smooth. There is nothing uh, tremendous, uh, uh, um, uh, tremendously strong, uh, a catastrophic process. It's a smooth transition from uh, a neutron star accreting over the critical over the critical mass and therefore you have three interpreter first as the supernova explode leaves out a new born neutron star like the Crab nebula any supernova create a new neutron star then there is the second component the supernova material which accretes on the companion neutron star Therefore, there is this triptych, the new neutron star, the companion neutron star accreting, and forming a black hole. And out of this, we will see uh, in a moment, the accretion of the supernova ejecta onto the new neutron star creates the afterglow. And I will show you this. But uh, the accretion of the, new, of the supernova onto the companion neutron star create a black hole. And out of the creation of the black hole, you have the new physics of the world solution. And I will go as soon as possible to this topic. And this accretion generate the Jev radiation. On the, on, the mani on, the magnetized new, uh, on the magnetized black hole accreting from the supernova, while the accretion of the, of the supernova into the new neutron star gives the afterglow. But what is exceptional is this uh, moment here, two seconds, and this is the novelty which we have finally understood after many, many years. It was finally sent to FISREV, and I will mainly this uh, topic, it was sent to FISREV, it was analyzed uh, by the referee, the referee found the article quite uh, ample, but he said, cannot be accepted unless you don't explain better. Well, we did a special effort, which finally ended the 15th of August last month, and uh, we could really go into the detail, not very much these details were done before, of the binary of the BDHN, and Orge will discuss this, but we could go finally to the action of this special two-second emission. This is the machine of gamma ray burst. The machine of gamma ray burst is practically based on a world solution. And the world solution has four different region, the polar region, the equatorial region, and the system is neutral. You will find all the details uh, more from Orge. And uh, it's still Orge who made and, uh, and published in Astronomy Astrophysics the emission of radiation, of Jev radiation, from the polar re region at what I mentioned this morning, 
uh, after the very exciting talk we heard, of course, uh, the exciting talk was accretion on the polar direction, while here we have the rotation and the world solution creating the jet, the emission, an emission which is uh, on a 60 degree angle. Org will, uh, will go on on this. But let me try to be, to find a way to explain to you, not the detail, because <laughs> it, it was terribly difficult to explain, uh, introduce this uh, machine, which primordially we discussed in Nice with uh, some of you and some of the results are very close to the one that were developed here by Turnatov and collaborator. And, uh, and let me go to the key point. Let's see how are we doing with time. How many minutes I still have? Well, then I have really to hurry up. I will leave you the. I will le leave you the details of. I will leave you the paper. But uh, let's see the the key point. The key point of the paper is that when you look at the gamma ray burst, there are three different components: the afterglow. The afterglow. The jet radiation. And then there is this UPE. This UPE is ultra relativistic prompt emission phase. Why is so unique? It's unique because if you take the total energy of the gamma ray burst, 40% of the energy is emitted here. 40%. But not only that, if you make a spectral analysis, a detailed spectral analysis. I'm, I am sorry it is uh, so twisted. You have a characteristic uh, uh, spectrum. If you take the in, in uh, these two seconds, you divide these two seconds in, in two, one second and another second, and the spectrum has a thermal component and a cutoff power law. But then, if you divide by four, <laughs> you find again the same spectrum. This is uh, one second, this is half a second, reproduced. And then, uh, this was the topic we were trying to present here last meeting by this very bright Chinese student. But if you go one step further and you divide again by two, and again by two, the spectrum is always the same, is self-similar. Of course, there is a point at which you cannot go further because you don't have enough photon to make the statistics. But you have at least the motivation to make a model. You have enough data to make a model. Well, you will, I want to give you, uh, excuse me, oh, Santa uh, uh, I want just to give you, uh, the key point is, here, here is the table, one second, two sec, uh, half a second, ta 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 ta, -ta and you have always self-similarity. Therefore, we understood that we were in presence of a, of a fractal-like structure in the signal. And the challenge has been to understand the physical process, the physical process giving origin to this, uh, to this phenomenon. And uh, this process is just the, the uh, well, 
you will, you will see the, uh, the details, the characteristic, the key characteristic of this uh, process is the new concept of an effective charge, which is just the product of the magnetic field B0, J and G. And uh, this effective charge you can take and insert in a Kern-Newman solution in the first approximation. And then you can go back to the, to the physics uh, of an overcritical field, which we studied long ago with Thibaut Amour, but the critical field generate the plus and minus plasma, and this plus and minus plasma generate the, by a transparency, the, at the transparency, the thermal emission and the cutoff power law. We have all the details of the computation, but uh, this is a totally new physics. And uh, you will have all the details, and uh, I just uh, uh, call an attention on the conclusion. The machine, the characteristic of the, this machine is this effective charge. The process is vacuum polarization, the one which we uh, studied long ago with uh, uh, Jim Wilson. It reached transparency, and that transparency you have both the cutoff power law and the thermal emission. Well, this, re this uh, result was uh, finally uh, uh, accepted for publication and uh, is in print at the moment. But how unique is, uh, I promise to say something on this. Uh, let's look at another source, 18.0720b. Where is the UP? It's here. Again, 40% of the energy. Again, the same cell similar structure. But in addition, you have also the Jev radiation, the afterglow with the S data, and all this beautiful physics which uh, by this moment we understand. And, uh, and uh, in particular, since uh, this morning I promise, uh, when you look uh, at, the new at the emission of the companion of the new neutron star formed in the process, uh, you have the last part, the first part, which is very complicated, but the last part again, as this power law that was shown in the pulsar in this morning. I have no time to go further, but again, I can show you again in the case of uh, this source, the same table with the same cell similarity. Therefore, we are in presence uh, of, of a completely new domain in which, the, in which you will uh, hear a little bit more from Orge, uh, in which the system is not classic, is quantized. It emits quanta, Orge will speak about that, on time scale very short of 10 minus 9 seconds, repetitively. And, uh, and uh, that part is uh, new science because the, the machine is quantum and not a classical. In particular, all the physics uh, which we developed earlier in the last stable orbit, ISCO and so forth, does not apply to this, pro to this GRB. GRB are simple. You have just a new neutron star pulsar like, a black hole which emit uh, this radiation, uh, which will said uh, Orge, and the third component, the, this uh, UPE phase. Well, the, this is uh, a reality at the moment, and this is the other system in which you see the JEV, the, the afterglow, the UPE, and all these other phenomena which we completely understand. I promise to do very, this is the afterglow the afterglow in the X-ray with the special slope. 
Therefore, in this analysis of GRB, which I hope very much many of you will study and we will be able to explain to you, is the characteristic, the backbone, the backbone of all GRB. And, uh, and it's relatively simple. Now, I want to be up to date 0609-2021, 06th of September, 6th of September was Monday. A GRB exploded. We rush to make the analysis because this object is at a redshift of 6.3. And we had studied in uh, 09, 04, 23, on 20 in, uh, we had studied a, a GRB at a redshift of 8.2, the farthest GRB ever known. And this is the next closer by 6.3. And when you look uh, at this uh, X-ray emission of the two of them, now, of course, uh, one is at 8.2, one at 6.3. The data are still from Swift. But if you scale them in the rest frame, <laughs> they overlap completely. This, uh, for us, is great triumph because we understand the machine. We understand the machine and, uh, and, we, and we will be able to explain to you and uh, to anyone uh, uh, this result. Next, and uh, I will finish. But again, what should I do for or, or stop the, uh, just the, the next? Uh, but it's not... Uh, and? Eh? Yeah. Ah, e, e, il pa e il paper di Feynman non l'abbiamo messo. Ah, it's okay, no problem. Because at least one person here, Marek, knows that paper. The fact that, the that this UP is discrete <laughs> and quantized was the topic of a fantastic paper. A fantastic paper in which the idea that the system, that physics, is quantized and discrete was the topic of a fantastic paper by Richard Feynman. Well, we have reached that conclusion. <laughs> I have read that paper just before coming. It's a fantastic paper. Everybody should look. But we have the proof. You, you remember all this cutting, self-similar, that the emission is quantized, is not class and discrete. And therefore, it's a new opening to science. It's a new opening in which the time scale we were speaking <laughs> are 10 minus 9 seconds. 10 minus 9 seconds, a physicist said. What? So what, what you do in 10 minutes? Well, if you go to Livermore, uh, these people have kept going after Wilson introduced the electron positron plasma to us. And uh, they have sent a, a laser that in 10 minutes, 8 seconds mimic fusion. Well, <laughs> we are the cousin. If you want to know the real science, the very high energy process, we have to go to GRB and to study cell similarity 
and quantum effect and uh, quantum and discrete effects. Well, this was just uh, a summary of every of everything. And I feel happy that at least I had from GRB a present for Sterklisch and you an observation of uh, a GRB at z equals 6, which proves our approach is very much on the right direction. And please, questions. Marek. Hello, very nice lecture. And I like also your historical introduction to your lecture very much. But I need uh, a paper. Uh, for let you. me ask my question. I have a very specific Marek, question. Probably. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much, Reno, for a uh, beautiful lecture. And I enjoy also uh, your historical uh, in introduction. Uh, but I have a, a specific question to the last part of your lecture. Because quantize is not the same as discrete. We do see in gravity many discrete phenomena which are not which has which have nothing to do with quantum physics. So my question is is Planck constant present in your analysis of gamma reverse? Specifically, do you have in any of your formulae uh, the Planck constant? I, uh, I am uh, very happy to let the floor <laughs> to uh, Orge will uh, write for you the formula which we need, H, C, and G, of course. But, but. not the charge. You need H, C, and G, and you need, and you need a magnetic field. It looks that the fundamental building block are uh, not the charge, but the rotation of care, the magnetic field associated and these two create an effective charge. And the emission, this is the beauty, believe me, you will be, you will be convinced. The referee, which I think is the man we spoke, said, quanta, but I cannot understand. Well, we published the paper on quanta. He said, yes, but don't ask me. I cannot understand. I Stand for, for many weeks, but I cannot understand. Well, don't worry. I, I, I did not answer him. Don't worry. We, we will help you. But I think with Orge, we finally found an easy way. I don't know if he will speak about, but certainly it has been originating here, of explaining this quantum. Let him speak and then see if uh, it's interest for you. But again, no charge. Charge is no fundamental. Uh, more or less relating with the, the professor's question, if I understood well, you s if I understood well, you say that the fractal behavior is a kind of proof of quantum gravity? Um, yes. OK. But this fractal behavior could be a signal from some conformal theory. And we know that conformal theory not necessarily means quantum theory. This is precisely the point of Feynman. Be careful, he said, because one thing is discrete and one thing is quantum. I think <laughs> we have reason to believe that uh, we have both. Discrete is uh, necessary, but quantum is also necessary because we see, we see the Jev emission. The big 
message I gave here to the people looking at the at the at M87, of course I could not say more than a few words in M87, is that if they really look there with enough uh, sensitivity, and this will be a point of org coming, they have to see not a shadow, they have to see a, a, a system which change on the order of hours from the, from the active region of the world solution. And this is a prediction I made here and I will write in the proceedings, if the, you will make proceedings. The, uh, the M87, if you look in the nucleus, the, the old idea of the shadow and so forth, this uh, as a, at an era <coughs> in which we were speaking about Churchill solution. But the message which came after the Christodoulou Ruffini formula, he, and you remember, maybe you were in, uh, in the Zouche. Okay, when I said black holes are alive. But this was a, a logo, and uh, Novikov came later. Remo, this was the greatest shock that we had in Les Uches. Of course, but yesterday, the week before, thanks to the pandemia, we have reached the point of explaining it. And I'm very happy to be here just after the pandemia. <laughs>